I'm Norma Kamath. I was born and brought up in Bombay. The fifth child in a family of ten. My parents were very God-fearing people. They were involved in parish activities. Also in the community, we were Mangalorians. And, and they, my father was also involved in politics. We were a close-knit family. My father was very particular that we should have our meals together at noon and the family prayer at night. We always went for a family holiday once a year, full month's holiday, which we enjoyed. In 1962, I got married to Tasi De Silva Kamath. It was an arranged match. My husband was working in Germany and later Scotland. And so for the next three years, we lived abroad. We had our first child and it was difficult for me because he would travel a lot as an engineer. The weather was treacherous in Scotland and it was difficult for me, but people were very helpful and somehow I managed the situation. In 1965, we were transferred to Bombay, India. And there I had the next two children, Geeta and Vinay. And in 1978, we moved down to Bangalore. My husband decided to leave the firm and started his own optics company. Here I took up a job as a teacher in the junior school while my children studied in the same school. In 1980, my husband had a property dispute and the whole family was disturbed. There wasn't any peace in our family anymore. We had to hear a lot of abuse. We tried to help somebody, but the gentleman misunderstood and he turned against us. And we had a lot of court cases and it was very difficult. At this time, my son developed a mental problem. We were very disturbed. He had to be on medication. And we were worried about the safety of our children. We were very sad when we discovered that our son had developed a mental problem and we had to give him medication. A friend of my husband who was a counsellor and a priest, he suggested that we put him in an institution called Atma Shakti Vidyalaya, which dealt with such problems. And we decided to try it out. Here they took him off medication completely and they gave him group therapy, gestalt therapy, transactional analysis and some other type of therapies. I felt the terrible loss of my eldest son. At this time, a friend told me about a prayer meeting, a charismatic prayer meeting. I had no idea what it was, but I went. I felt so consoled and so comforted at this meeting. And then when they announced a retreat, I enrolled myself for this retreat at St. Peter's Seminary. It was a beautiful experience. For the first time, I felt so peaceful, so joyous. I had a deep experience of my father in heaven. I had lost my father shortly before and I was sad and I wondered what my heavenly father would be like. And here I had this Abba experience. I felt the father's love, his peace, his joy and I experienced Jesus so deeply. It 
made a great impression on my life, this retreat. And when I went home, I was so excited with this God experience. And I kept sharing all about it at home. The next morning, when I got up early to pray at 5 a.m., my children were surprised. I could never get up early. In fact, my husband would always ask me to get up early. And now, with God's grace, I was praying my personal prayer in the morning. They were so touched that they wanted to experience the Lord. When he grew in the Lord, he spent much time before the Blessed Sacrament in prayer. And he was made the prayer group leader after ministering in the praise and worship ministry, the word ministry, and adoration. And very often he would be called to divine, to minister for the youth retreats. Both my children had joined the youth meetings and so that helped them to grow a lot. On August 20th, 2011, Vinay was ordained a priest and he is now serving in the Bombay Diocese. It was a great joy for us all. My mother would have been so happy to have seen a priest in the family. For She longed for this and among her ten children, there were no priests. But Vinay himself fell ill 10 days before his ordination. He was unable to do anything. The whole prayer group took over all the arrangements. And it was so orderly and well done. Nobody would have ever thought that Vinay was ill. One day at Mass, at the time of the consecration, I could see my eldest son, Rohan, broken on the cross. It was such a shock for me. But at the same time, as the, as the priest lifted up the chalice, I heard the word of the Lord. And he said, Did not I ask Abraham to sacrifice his son Isaac? this moment, I just accepted the situation and I surrendered my son to the Lord. I felt that he was using him to bring many souls to God. It was a great consolation for me. After the year 2000, our eldest son Rohan returned home. We were made to understand that the therapy would take five years, but it took a long 18 years. We were so happy to welcome him home. But we found it was difficult for him to pray. So we decided, both my husband and I, that we should take him to the Divine Center for a retreat. When we brought him here, he was on medication, so he couldn't attend the early sessions. But he managed to listen to the word of God and he benefited a lot from this retreat. Those whom Jesus healed, they came out as witnesses. Witnesses telling everyone what happened to them. They became witnesses and testimonies of God's power. One thing we must know, whenever God wants to intervene, He does it. And when God intervenes, it's a personal act of love. And that's what we are waiting to experience in our bodies, in our lives, in our relationships. A personal act of love, a personal intervention of God in our lives so that you and I we would be able to say what St. John said in the first letter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. 
St. John wrote, the word appeared. We saw him, we heard him, we touched him, we have had communion with him and we are happy. When we took him home, he was reading the word of God. He was able to pray more easily. Then we started taking him for the prayer meetings, which he enjoyed. We took him each week for the Bread of Life prayer meeting. And he was very happy about it. At night, he would join us in the night prayers. And he would say the litany and also read the liturgy of the, of the next day's Mass. And a special prayer we had introduced after we started all these problems. It is from Zechariah. Not by power nor by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. These mountains shall be removed. And we still say this prayer up to this day, believing that all the mountains will be removed. We have seen many mountains removed already. And we have faith that this last mountain of Rohan's recovery will take place sometime. Rohan has a very pleasant nature and is liked by all. Recently, he started uh, studying the Word of God on the Old Testament course conducted by Jeff Cavan, conducted by our prayer group. And I accompanied him. He grew, grew so interested in the word that when it was over, he asked for more. And so I started teaching him the Gospels by Tim Gray, an American scripture scholar. He's so eager to learn the word of God and enjoys it. He also helps at the Infant Jesus Library. And he has grown so close to his father. He gives him his medicines now that he is 82 and his memory is fading. And he was telling me, I don't know what boys do who don't have a father. And so I live in hope. We take one day at a time. And I believe that the Lord has, will complete the work that he has started. I cling to the psalmist's words that he will not die but live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never end. They are new every morning. Great is His faithfulness. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. Jesus Christ tells us that if you remain in me and my words remain in you, you shall ask for anything you wish and it shall be given to you. I like these words very much because it is very close to my heart. I came to Divine here in 1997 with heavy heart as I want to tell of myself. I am Wilson Carvalho, coming from Belgaum, North Karnataka. I come from a very big joint family where we have an ancestral business as fish. And later on, I was into real estate business. My life in this world was only to make money, to get name, fame and everything, which I tried my best before coming to Divine Retreat Center. My aim was only thing I should get everything more and more to be a happy person in this world. And with that intention, I came to Divine Retreat Center in July 1997. As every child has dreams and plans, I too was enjoying my life along with my parents, my dad, my mom, with four brothers and one sister. But Things are not as we wish and we plan. Where there was a sudden shock when I lost my daddy 
at the age of only 16 where I knew nothing about what life and the world is. And I did to it. Immediately after five years, I lost my mom also, who was ill and handicapped at that time. It was very hard life, where my plans and dreams were all shattered. My dad too had loans in his business when he got separated from his brothers. And it was too hard for us at that young age. That was the time when I entered into this world to face all the problems, to face all the difficulties and come up in life. And life was not that easy. After my daddy's death, as I was facing the challenges of life, my only intention and goal was to make money and to be rich by name, by fame and by everything by hook and crook. And with that, I started my new journey. Always working more and more, almost 17 to 18 hours a day, only to get money, to get good name and fame. And going beyond that, every time for all silly things, I used to get angry. I became short-tempered, which I realize now, after coming back to divine. Where I used to see all others, who are so rich and so good and settled in life. But for me, it was not easy at that young age. As I was born and brought up in a Catholic family, I used to go to Mass on Sundays only. And whenever I prayed, my only intention was so selfish that I was praying that I should get everything of this world within a very short time. And for that, I was away from my church, which I only took it as an obligation. I entered into politics. I went ahead for social work. And looking after my business and all, and working so hard, a time came when I got everything. But I lost patience. I started getting angry for silly things. I started getting off for all the things, even with my wife and my children. For working so long, at the end of the day, I could realize that I am getting everything, but within my heart, I was not happy. And time came when I could not get even sleep at nights, working for 17 to 18 hours. At that time, I started realizing that I am getting everything of this world, but why I am not happy in life. And at that time, in 1995, one of our distinct relatives, Brother Santan Lobo, was getting people to Divine Retreat Center. I used to help him to get people from Belgaum and surrounding. Every time, I used to give him my name but because of my work and busy schedules there, I could not go with him and I was giving excuses again and again. But time came, I had urine infection. I could not get sleep even at nights and I was getting tense and tense, not knowing what exactly is happening to me. And that was the time when I decided to come to Divine Retreat Center. My only intention was that all my work should be done and I should get good money and everything to live and enjoy a happy life and to get rid of my health problem and sleep which I was not getting at that time. My elder son was only four years old and my second son was one and a half years old. At that time, my wife was in the ladies section along with my second son and I used to take care of my elder son 
in the Jain's dormitory. But when I started listening to the word of God, and especially to this word from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 15, verse 7, where the Lord was telling me, Remain in me and I will remain in you. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, then you shall ask for anything and it shall be done to you. That was the promise of my Lord. But I was praying only for myself and for my every good thing. I started thinking of my past. And at that time, every time when I was listening to the word of God, I started recollecting that my Lord Jesus is so good to me. He gave me everything what I needed when I, when I did not even have my daddy and my mommy. At that young age, when things were not so easy, my God gave me everything as the retreat was going on during the adoration service. Tears were rolling down my eyes and I could only recollect the past of my life. I started feeling guilty for myself and asked the Lord, Lord, I'm sorry, I said. You have given me everything, but I was only running behind the things of this world. And at that time, I started remembering all the good things the Lord has done for me. My heaviness, my everything started subsiding as the retreat went on. And after that, when I went for confession, it was a very long confession for me. I remembered everything what I had done in my past. To gain the things of this world, how I hurted people, how I, I was getting angry, everything I could recollect. I cried out to the Lord and that was the best confession I made in my life. That was the best confession of my life after a big gap of nine years. I remembered everything what I have done in my past. When I heard the word of God again and again telling me that my God loves me so much. And after that confession, I felt as if something heavy from my body, everything has gone. My tension, my pressure, whatever I had, with that heavy heart what I had come to divine, everything vanished and I became as light as a child and started thanking my God for everything he has done for me. And after that, I started crying out to the Lord and asking him, tell me Lord now what I should do in life. I forgot everything what I had come with, with so many intentions, so many works to be done. And at that time, the good Lord touched me and made me a happy person. And at that time, in 1997, the Lord inspired me to have a con convention, a retreat in our area, in our diocese of Belgaum, where there was no much charismatic renewal there. We used to get people in groups from Belgaum and surrounding. And at that time also, about 75 people were there with us. But when we thought of our people there, who cannot afford to come all the way from Karnataka, spending money and almost eight to nine days, I started praying to the Lord to tell me his wish and will. And at that time only, I went and met Reverend Father Augustine Valoran, requesting him 
to send the Konkani team to our area there. That convention was very successful. More than six to seven thousand people attended that convention, and everyone was touched and blessed by the Lord. Our Lord Jesus started using me and my wife as His powerful instrument from 1997 till now. Every year, I come to Divine Retreat Center, and this is my 18th retreat. And whatever time we are giving to the Lord. The Lord is blessing us more and more beyond imagination. Every time, whatever we have prayed for, the Lord has given us hundred folds. Whatever little I am doing for my Lord, the Lord is blessing us again and again. Again and again, where there are no words to explain, I have great joy and satisfaction in what I do. And every time, when I pray to my Lord, the Lord answers my prayers. It is like talking to my Lord alone and alone, and the Lord answers every prayer of us, which the world could not give me in my past life. I am a very happy person. With my wife and children, living as an instrument of my Lord, and that is the joy which I can say that my Lord is a loving God, is a Lord full of blessings, and that we experience in our day-to-day -day life. Every day, when we pray for others. we experience this how good our lord is and the word of god which tells us again and again that whatever we ask in faith our god gives us at the right time i praise and thank my lord for the gift of life he has given me and for showering all his graces thank you jesus praise you jesus